Right guys, here we are. This is the turbo replacement video. We've got a 400 odd thousand K 1KD and it is howling like a siren, okay? That's when you know you need a turbo. 400,000 K, so a few things. We've got the vehicle on the hoist, got the wheel off. We're gonna pull these plastic uh, rubbers off here for access. You can see, obviously, the turbo's in there. So step by step, spraying the exhaust. Uh, the bolts that have gotta come undone here, there, is probably a good start. Bada bing, we're gonna get the air box out, we're gonna get the intercooler off to get started and open up the access a bit, and we'll tell you what's happening from there. We've got two hands on the job, we're gonna get this happen quickly now. We've got the air box coming out and the intercooler coming off. Right, so we got the uh, air box out of the way. You can see that's what it looks like without the air. And just so you know, guys, just for those that want the extra info, air intake, that's the height that it's at, right? Inside the vehicle, that's where your air comes in and the duct faces backwards so that water would be need to be up this high inside the guard to get water in your intake. A little bit of bonus info. Uh, three bolts, if I remember correctly, hold the airbox down, or is it two? Three. One, two, three. Where's the other one? I knew it was three, but I can't think where it is. is it? There is three. Yeah. Anyway, we don't know. There it is. Yeah, it was hidden. Okay. So three bolts and uh, obviously the intercooler. The video is to remove the intercooler. We've got separate videos for that. That's why we didn't include it. I'm trying to keep this one shorter with the important, more turbo related information. Now I just want to, this little disclaimer, just because you watch this video, it doesn't mean you can do it. So maybe you should take it to a professional because it's going to be a very rare occurrence that you have a problem with the turbo and you need to change it. But for the few people that do, this is what the video is for now. There's different ways to get the turbo out. You can see where it is down there. There's your turbo, right? But, you know, you could uh, you could take the manifold off and take the studs out and just lift the whole assembly out. You could probably take the compressor off. You might get it through there by just not taking the pipes off. Now, see where these... Um, this is what I talk about in other videos, where these wiring looms rub when they're put in the wrong places, right? So, we're going to undo those four bolts there. Not any of the air pipes, they've got gas in them. These four bolts, that one, another one here, two underneath. And sit, get the main drive belt will be coming off any minute. It's already, see, started to remove. You can see the belt's off down there. Again, that's included in other videos. Look, it may be helpful if you've purchased parts and you're in the VIP group, because that has a lot more videos with this sort of detail. On this video, uh, think yourself lucky if it ends up outside the VIP group, because it could be a really good one. Um, so it may be a matter of getting that compressor back here out of the way over here. Uh, we may remove other things out of the way like that heater pipe, whatever over here, you know. It's a, there's variables guys, there's things you can get away with, there's different ways to do things. So as I said, you can take the whole manifold off or you can leave the manifold and slip the turbo out this way. This is one procedure we're going to show you today. So, bada bing at the moment, it's removing the compressor and we'll reposition it somewhere out here, uh, out of the way to access the nuts and bolts and then do the hard stuff. Quite fiddly here, you just gotta reroute the wiring loom a little bit around the compressor and gently, always trying to be careful. You know, the aircon pipes, you can, they're flexi hoses further down there, but you don't wanna bend any of the uh, alloy pipes if you, if you can avoid it. But you can twist and maneuver and stuff like that um, to get it out of the way. Let's just see, yeah, usually we can just do it really carefully and make sure that you don't damage anything in doing so okay next component getting removed the dipstick there's a 10 mil there that's been removed out of the thermostat housing that's where the thermostat is guys quite fun to get to and then there's two seals on the dipstick there's a grommet and an o-ring uh, check the condition of those you may or may not need to replace them out comes the dipstick let's just have a look and show you the grommet and the o-ring all right there's the, the grommet furthest out and the o-ring in there they probably just need to clean and lube and they can go back in, but we'll check them out. We keep those in stock in case we need them. Okay. In case you ever want to change your thermostat, there's the housing there. It's a real pain that you know what compared to a lot of other vehicles. Um, what's next? What's next? Right. Getting the plugs off. There's some plugs here that can be quite stuck with dirt over the years, right? And in this case, it's kind of like a two-person job is the safest way to just take your time you got to make sure you've released that plastic tab. Remember, we've demonstrated on some other vehicles where depending what state and what heat and what the use has been, whether that plastic's going to break. Um, you know, 
you just need to take your time, get those tabs pushed in, and the plugs need to be gently and forever wiggled, and they'll slowly come off. See all that dust on the plug is just brushing off now, right? That's what kind of like glues the plug on. So there's a few plugs down there to unplug. Have fun with those. Okay, so now the vehicle's raised up on the hoist. We're going to come under here and take out these two bolts, right? That's the squeak exhaust gasket area in there, so good time to change that as well if you're changing your turbo. And if you follow it up here, you'll see three more bolts. One, two, three. We're gonna get those off now. Usually they come off without too many issues, and it's been off recently, checking out this turbo. And then on the back of the turbo, three more bolts, but that may come off once it's out of the vehicle, but we'll need to remove that bracket at the bottom there, which has got two bolts and a nut. Pipe removed. Mm-hmm. 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 Gonna remove that bracket and the two bolts to the block. Might be easy to take the one off underneath the turbo as well. That's your oil. Um, where the oil comes back to the block, ski, um, yeah, mm-hmm, so that's probably the go at this stage. What do you reckon boys, take this bracket off and the uh, oil return? Mm-hmm. Hey Kim, what are you doing mate, what are you, what's going on? Loosening up all the oh, be tight, that one. turbo support bracket. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, that's about exactly to, yeah. Give that one a good spray in it. Oh. And a really long extension bar helps. Got it, yeah, beautiful. wonder how tight this one will be mm. now. Okay, not too bad. So the two to the block are always not too bad. It's just the rusty one to the turbo mainly, yeah. Okay, so one nut off, the one bolt out, another bolt, there's the bracket, don't forget to put that back on. Don't just throw it over your shoulder. Just draining the coolant and the oil. We like nice new coolant and oil for turbos. So it's going to get another oil change and who put green coolant in? Don't put green coolant in Toyotas. Just put the, you know, the right stuff, you know. I just don't like green. Red, it's Toyota's red. Super long life, genuine. We all use the same one. Then there's no mixes and we know it's good stuff. It's good. It's fair value for money. You know, it's not a lot of money. Just get the genuine one for that one. Nice and tight. Nicely done. I like that. Still tight though, it cracked but it's still tight. A bit more of a push, a bit more of a crack and she came loose. That's the third nut on the dump pipe. So in this, look, you know, like I said, there's optional things. We've chosen to remove this to open up access to the oil feed pipe to get to that bolt. So, you know, sometimes taking off a bit more Maybe it's harder to take it off now, but maybe it makes the rest of the job taking off easier. So that's what we went for. Last nut coming off. Okay, so we've got the new turbo here. We're going to get this out of the packaging. See there where the tape is in through the bag, right? In through behind there. Right, that's your oil supply and oil return. We're going to feed some oil into it. It's very important to lubricate the turbo before you install it. As soon as you start cranking the engine and the engine starts, it's spinning at 1.21 million gigawatts. Yeah, look, I don't know, I can't remember how many, 100,000 RPM or whatever it is, how many, whatever it is, but it's real quick and you can damage the turbo. It needs to have oil there, very important. So we're gonna get out of the packaging and lube it up. Go on there, you got that flux capacitor off yet? Just while we're on this vehicle, obviously, it's done, as we said, quite a few Ks in the 400,000 K range and some pretty average uh, technicians working on it. And just have a look at this for a laugh, right? Original suspension. Look at these struts, guys. They're just caked. They've leaked. They're flogged as anything. Original suspension at 400 and odd thousand Ks. Absolutely crazy. 
People have been in here before. That's what those two photos were about. They couldn't even put a zip tie on the inner boot properly. It was all just sort of half on, half off. You can go back and have a look at that if you like, but we just couldn't help ourselves just replace that zip tie. The plastic zip tie is not the most ideal, but they do the job. They go tight enough. The boot doesn't twist. It's all sealed up. And if you use good quality ones, they shouldn't deteriorate and fall off in six months or a year like some of the poor quality ones. Okay, it looks like the flux capacitor is ready to come out. Let's remove the flux capacitor. Beautiful, look at that. Oh, beautiful. That makes things easier. Now we can get to that oil feed pipe, dead center of the picture. There's that uh, hollow bolt there, butter bing, and that comes down to underneath the bottom of the turbo. We're gonna remove that and the oil return line, which is the one that goes to the block seen in the bottom of the picture up underneath the bottom of the turbo. We're gonna get those two out of the way now. Ooh, look at this baby. Ooh, ho, ho. Let's have a look on this side. Not much to see in there. Mmm, a few plugs. This is, okay, we've got a bit of information for you here. So when we say, so you, the problem with these, you've got moving parts, okay? So you've got a DC motor here. It does what it's told, and it, to this, if I could whistle it on to the, hits the, and pushes the, and you can see the rod and the linkages, and what happens, that goes down into the turbo, and that's where these can rust and corrosion, and these can get jammed up. That's where we talk about lubing these components up down that end there, if you're having problems, and sometimes it solves the problem. Have a look at this baby, look at that. Beautiful, right? Now, Let's have a look, take a look down here. What can we see? Wow, what's that? You can't really see much. It's, we really need to split it. We're not going to split. Maybe we'll split the old turbo in this for another video, probably another video later on. So you can see the variable vanes. That's what they move position depending on the engine, turbo speed, the load, what you're doing, you know, constantly sort of moving depending on the conditions. And that's where this motor comes in and the whole connection and so it's a really good system to make good power and torque throughout the range. And, but the downside is you've got more moving parts, right? So at the moment, that's all really nice and clean, happy days. If you are having issues with it, something you could try is, you know, getting it, getting the turbo off to this point or, you know, you know, butter being at this end, you'd have to get it off to access this one way or the other, right? You can't, let's have a look, you know, you can't really get in and clean anything there. You can pull it apart if you like, if you want to become a turbo expert. At the end of the day, you've got nothing to lose if you think you need a new turbo to do this first and pull it apart and see if you can find the problem yourself. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, you're probably going to wreck your turbo. I don't do this. I send it to the turbo specialist because he's a turbo specialist. But you can see those parts down in there. They do move, and all the exhaust soot and everything and debris, and kind of crap over the years, is what can cause some problems. I'm certainly not the expert on it. I'm going to try and get down to the turbo expert and make a video, and we'll get a whole heap of information off him and share that with you as well so you can understand this system a bit more. Anything you would like to add to this thing? We're just going to lube it up anyway. So mm -hmm. there's your oil supply and oil return holes there. Butter bing. Okay, so I just said that the uh, oil goes in there. That's wrong. I don't know why I said that because it's quite obvious the two holes are the same size. That's coolant, so don't worry about that. That'll get coolanted up when we fill up the coolant. This is your, where your oil supply and return is. It's all taped up. The small hole is the oil supply and the large is the return. So. It's already been oil. They've put oil in there anyway, but we're going to have more oil, more oil, more right, oil. Right, so just in here, uh, removing, that's the oil supply one at the top that goes to the block, and they go up underneath the turbo and the return line, and removing the studs out of the bottom of the turbo so that we can get the pipes right off out of the way and give them a clean out. All right, so the fuel supply and return pipes are off. So there's a coolant line on the other side of the turbo you can't see from here. We just remove those hoses further up and that pipe will come off with the turbo, I believe. So now, I don't know what I've missed in this video, but probably just the three bolts at the top there, you can see kind of the middle of the picture, bolting the turbo to the exhaust manifold, the two closest nuts, and there's a hard one to get to that's behind. 
hopefully they come undone. Give them a bit more of a spray. I think they've been sprayed and if I'm looking at it correctly, we should be able to then manoeuvre that out up through the top. Let's see, eh? All right, let's have a look here, right? So you can see the coolant lines go back behind the turbo, those metal pipes bolted onto the turbo come around here. Remove these two coolant hoses is all we need to do. Um, then a respray of those nuts. You can see the two at the top, one there. You can see them both from this side's even easier. The other one, you got to get to down through this hole, right? Bada bing, not too hard. We may pull this bracket off the side of the head just to give us a bit more access is a good idea. It's only two bolts. The old take a couple extra things off to make it easier. I'm sure you could do it without that, but getting a bar straight down through here, so you can see what I mean. It's uh, if it blocks the view a bit, it's in the way. So this bracket's coming off next, and then those cracking those three nuts, and that whole turbo should lift out this way. Bada bing. Tight, mate. Be tight. That sucker down there. Oh, you got it. Beautiful, beautiful. Those muscles again. Oh, careful, mate. The turbo's wobbling around. It might drop. No, I left the two uh, nuts on this side on and undo the back one so it doesn't drop on me. Oh, that's a great idea. I probably would have done that too. What about you, mate? Same? Great yes. idea. Fantastic efforts. And look at that. Just about off. Getting that nut out, mate. What's what have you got there? Oh, magnet. magnet. That's awesome. Who invented magnets? What would we do without it, eh? Alright, so what we need is someone underneath to just support the weight of it. It would be the easy way to do it. Oh, look, we've got that. Yeah, someone at the top taking the last nut off. And then getting rid of that nut or stud, whichever comes up. Sometimes you get a stud, sometimes you get a nut. nut. Heads or tails? What do we got? Heads or tails? Nuts or bolts or studs? Or... Nuts. I think yeah, the whole off. stud. No, the nut's off. off. Uh, and don't drop that anywhere. Beautiful. And then if you come back up here, you'll be able to lift it out the top. Is that just sitting there now, is it? No, I'm going to drop it. Hold it. Drop it off the stud. Are getting a sore arm yet? No, it's not heavy. <laughs> Just got to wheel it out first before we can manoeuvre it out. Oh, I've got to take out this foam. The engine mount foam's blocking it. Wait, 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 wait. That's not this foam. Squash the foam. Oh, nice. Alright. You, I'll support it. No, I can't see you where you're going. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Gently, gently manoeuvring. Gently, gently. Just the pop on the thermoset has and get on the bottom a bit of a twist, I reckon. You could have dropped it down, yeah, down this way. Slight yeah. lift up at this end, maybe. You could have dropped it down here. Drop it at the bottom, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's try and get it. Out. Let's let's try and get it at the top this time, I reckon. Okay. Because it's just about. It's just a bit of a tight spot. I think you need to twist it back towards you a little bit, like uh, back to eleven o'clock. Yeah, that's it. Just slowly this way, that way it's going to come out. A bit, a, a bit like getting a steering rack in and out. Slowly fiddle this way, that way. Or maybe it doesn't come out and it just gets stuck there somewhere and you can't get it up or down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't That's jinx. it, just leave it there. It's jinxed now, mate. It's all jinxed. Slowly, slowly. That's it. What's getting caught up? Uh... Yeah, that's it. I think you're on the right. That's it. Always slowly thinking. You know, if you get tired, sit it somewhere, take a break, get an assistant, but see, just slowly, never force anything. Yeah, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the people watching the video. Just, uh, there's always a way, where there's a will, there's a way, nice and slowly. Again, see, taking this bracket off up here may have been a slight help, but no big deal. Same as a couple other brackets down there on the left. We could have, uh, we could have loosened off the, you know, this one here, over here. But this is without doing that. 
And we could have popped that heater pipe out of the clamp up there. But look at that, right? Butter bing, she's out. Okay, so we've got it on the bench. Obviously, we've taken the intake side here off. That's getting cleaned up. Let's take a bit of a look in there. Yeah, no surprise there. I'll have a closer look later. So we've got to swap that over onto the new turbo here. And the you're just getting the oil supply. Oh, that's no. the coolant. Cool. Yes. That, that'll be the second time I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, the coolant. Supply in between. We're going to give this a good clean out, making sure it's spotless mm. before it goes under the new turbo. Alright, that's about it then, isn't it? That's all that's got to come off. All new gaskets, so we've got the turbo gasket kit here for this. Get the uh, coolant pipes back on. The intake side. Got our gaskets here. Um, if anyone's wondering, gasket kit, if you want to get the gasket kit. We've got, a, we've got another one here, there's the part number. All right, that's the gasket kit. Comes with about, if I remember correctly, about eight gaskets for your turbo. Comes with, um, obviously, this one here. Yeah, everything you need, basically. So, um, yeah, there's about eight gaskets. I mean, you can reuse some of them, but why would you? You know, like that one there, you could reuse that. But uh, we're gonna put all new, obviously. That's how we roll. Bada bing, let's swap over the bits and we'll get this new beast back into the vehicle. And of course, we just had to take the studs off here and reuse them here well, this is looking good all changed over what i'm about to do now is put a bit of anti-seize on all these exhaust studs very important Perhaps that'll to... help so that it comes apart easier one day when there's a the next time mm -hmm. hopefully not but what, what do you reckon manufacturers don't really use anti-seize on a lot of components they put a lot of things together dry any mm. ideas or thoughts on that i think everything brand new in-house um they probably don't want it to be too easy to work on or last long they can sell you some parts maybe yeah that could be the case mm. i don't know what the thinking there is anyway looking good all right slipping it back in what do we say you took it out you put it back in Catch it, man. <laughs> anyway, a bit of fiddling around to get it down in position. So that's up in position, getting one of the nuts on. Once that's most of the way on, you can pretty well relax, mate. Let your big biceps have a rest. Two nuts on, three nuts on is the first step. Maybe even get the mounting bracket on, a few other pops before we tighten those up. What we like to do is get all the bolts started before we tighten anything up to make sure everything's in happy alignment with each other. So we've got the three bolts through the manifold, the one that goes through the top there, right? The nuts, right? They're on, they're sitting there basically finger tight in position. Now we're gonna go underneath and refit that oil line and the bracket and then we'll come back up here and fit up the uh, coolant lines and the plugs tighten up those three bolts get the compressor and everything back on butter bing we're getting towards a butter boom but it's not butter boom yet okay so just slip in the bolt to the oil supply line that goes to the block with the new gasket and the pipe's in position now we're going to refit there's a gasket that goes between the pipe and the turbo and then put the studs back in. The studs needed to be removed to get the pipe out. Just getting that gasket in position between the pipe and the turbo. Uh, sorry about the sideways in the skies, I just like to spice it up a bit. There go, try and get in here. Uh, see, it doesn't work like that. It's gonna focus too far, so if it's sideways or out of focus. Just putting the studs back in after refitting that gasket. 
Because right. those studs have got to come out to get the pipe in position. Unless you do it another way. There's other ways to do things. And then the one around the other side. Mm. So we've got the three bolts tight, the turbo is connected to the manifold, refitted the coolant hoses and just refitting the clamps into the factory position. Nicely done. Here's a thought to ponder. Here is a thought. Now, the dirtier your diesel is running, or the dirtier your 1KD is running, let's say from filters, sensors, injectors, the dirtier it's running, the more soot it makes, and the more soot's going to get down there to that variable vein system, right? Not looking too clean compared to the new one, is it? Anyway, just have a think about that. That's the dirty side. That's the exhaust side. Bang, you know, dirty soot in there. Good, bad. Well, better if it's cleaner. So, the cleaner it is, the better. Your injection system's got a direct relationship with how clean or dirty your exhaust system is going to be. Right, so, just recapping, we've got the oil feed line to the block tightened up. We've got the uh, line to the block down this end, tied up the return line and the studs back in and hard to show you but you know, up there somewhere, you know what I mean anyway, right? So, and then the bracket's back on, this bracket here, don't forget that, to the block, to the turbo, we've got the dump pipe back on and the, uh, the next bit of pipe, whatever, right, yeah. Bada bing and then we'll be back up the top to finish off. Bring the nuts back on, the dump pipe. Alright, so putting the um, engine pipe or catalytic converter pipe onto the dump pipe. You can see the new gasket there, new gaskets all the way through. In the last photo you may have seen, or one of the photos, that's the gasket that goes between the catalytic converter and the muffler. It's what causes the squeak sometimes. You can reuse it, that's the next one further down. Or you can replace it, they're about 30 bucks each. Maybe 40, depends who you buy them. We can only supply them if you're purchasing the injector kit. Text me about that if you want one of those included with any of your other parts kits. Right, we can supply your turbo, brand new. We can supply your injector kit, big front engine kit, the water pump timing belt kit that is. And of course this turbo kit comes with the turbo. It doesn't come with it normally, it does with our turbo if we supply it. Don't sell the turbo kit gaskets separately. Again, small things guys, very busy. Anyway, hopefully this has helped you if you need to get your turbo off. A bit of R&R, &R. that's remove and refit or remove and replace. Okay, so we're just double, triple checking. Everything's done, all nuts and bolts here. Um, pretty sure we're done underneath, so the wheel's going to be put back on. Bash plates are going back on here at the moment, and then it'll be up the top just to get everything up the top back on. You know, a few other bits and pieces air box, compressor, remember the compressor and the belt, the intercooler, all that sort of thing. So the bash plate's on, now the wheel's going on. You'll know how to do that. You don't need to uh, see how to install some wheel nuts there. Installing the dipstick again. And we checked the O-ring and the grommet. It was all good. We're going to reuse it this time. Never had an issue with an oil leak or even a sweat at the dipstick. If we're doing an engine or something, usually we'll replace, you know, depending on the age and the condition. So we've got some spares. I look at all the old ones there that I kept, and they're all in very good condition. So we've got new ones in stock, but. Uh, we like to save where we can and not waste, you know, replacing 
O-rings and gaskets if they're still in like new condition. Or well, you know, yeah, just like a new one. If there's no difference, what's the point? It's just rubber. So we're gonna nip that up. Plugged in the uh, wiring loom. There's a few things there. On the turbo, you can see the plug down the bottom there. Don't forget to plug that in. You know, a few clips and clips and things like that. Yeah, we've had a bit of a rag covering it. It's all pretty clean up here anyway, but uh, nothing will be falling in there. We'll just uh, have a look and make sure. But it's all pretty close to going back to finish, going back together. Mm, what do we got? The guards are back on the exhaust manifold and the turbo. We put those clamps on there, put the dipstick in. It's really a uh, air box and intercooler. Oh, we've got the, the crankcase ventilation pot. We can reinstall now, yep. We've got the bracket for the intercooler back on. This goes boom. So if someone's got a catch can fit and you want to re-move re it and put it back to how it was and you haven't got this pipe, this is what you need. You need this pipe here. And it's got a 12 mil bolt that bolted in there to the uh, to the head, which is reinstalling now. It's just a rubber boot at the bottom, no clamps. Same as at the top, rubber, no clamp. We've got all that information included in other videos, guys. So it's important to watch all the videos to the end. It's all part of the million piece jigsaw puzzle. Hope you've enjoyed this one so far. If you have, please remember to give us the thumbs up or hit the like button. And uh, look, we're just about done because quite simply, all we need to do is reinstall the air box and the intercooler, which was opposite to before. As I said, we've got an intercooler video. Um, so, you know, we've pretty well covered it all. Well, obviously we've got to get the compressor back on. Don't let me forget that. We need to do... That'll probably be the next thing actually, the compressor, we want to do that before we get the airbox and whatever. So it's after lunch now guys, you know, feeling a bit relaxed. Might have been a Canadian club or something involved over a uh, pub lunch. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's get that. And, and you got to make sure you get this wiring loom. This vehicle was set up incorrectly, I think. Whoever's worked on it before, they had the wiring loom in the wrong spot. And that's why there was this rub mark on the pipe there. So we're going to reroute that wiring loom in the correct position to save damage. Because that's how we roll. So, you know, we're getting there, getting there. So, uh, important thing, you know, not really replacement turbo related. But I'd like to go off topic and include important things. I already mentioned some clowns that have worked on this over the years and sent it to the wreckers. This wiring loom was in completely the wrong spot and it was over here. And you could see... Um, you know how close it is to eventually rubbing through that pipe so we've rerouted all that like I said fix things up as we go intercooler is going back on airbox is going back on it's all pretty straightforward now you know bada bing bada boom right, so as I said going back together we've got the compressors all bolted in position we've fixed up all these there's a clamp down here that's important that because the wiring loom normally sits sort of here towards the front of the compressor like so Right, now normally there's a clip up here that clips into this one here. You can see they've gone missing again, people work on the car, but it's okay, we're just gonna bring that up. We need to pull it up a little bit nice and firmly to get the marks right and the looms. We're gonna cover both of these and we're gonna put a zip tie through around there or something along those lines, you know. Um, what else? Basically, we are going, we've got another video showing you these, right? Once they get really old and worn and some clips missing, Partly to do with people working on cars and whatever. These were quite loose, obviously, when it came in. They're on the list with a lot of other things that need to be replaced, and we've got those in stock as well. We don't sell them separately. We've shown the part numbers in the video, so you can check that out. Um, this is on a 120. There's one each side. There's another one over that side. Um, but, you know, we've just been fixing up things as we go. Right. Um, all these are back in place. You just got to go over and double check everything guys. Double, triple check. Obviously we don't like the green coolant. This got a radiator recently. They didn't put the, the other, they didn't do a number of things, but the, the radiator shroud, we need to take these bolts out and lift it up because they didn't put the clip in at the bottom properly. When you put your radiator shrouds back in, if you do that BFE job, you got to make sure there's a little slotting clip at this side and at the other side that they slot in correctly. Um, this has obviously got it, so that's all secured there, that's good. The wiring loom, right. And, um, yeah, I think it's just the airbox, really. We'll have a quick look around, the plugs are on. A quick think, make sure nothing's been forgotten. 
because that's how you roll. You don't rush things, otherwise it ends up. It's going to cause inconvenience and it's going to cost someone money. And it should be the person that forgot, but often it's not. All right, guys, look, I think that's about it. You know how to put an air box in. I think we're done. Hopefully you got something out. Please give us a thumbs up. Hit the like button, the thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe, turn the bell on. I think we've got more better videos than this and better ones coming. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.